It can be just two or three And I feel that same sweet spirit That I felt of times before Surely I can say I've been with the Lord Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place I can hear the hem of his garment I can almost see his face and my heart is overflowing with the fullness of his joy I know without a doubt I've been with the Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. invite the junior trio to come sing for us now a song that they prepared for this convention while they come let's realize what it means is to stand in the presence of God as brother Cain said last night it's awesome to stand in the presence of God let's sing longing for Jesus while they come and make ready to sing longing longing for I have a longing in my heart for Him, just to be Just 
sing for us tonight. We are a needy, needy people. further for ministry of the word and inviting the presence of the Holy Spirit to come tonight. Let's sing welcome, welcome Holy Spirit tonight. Welcome, 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 Holy Ghost, we Together and sing, He is Lord, as we invite Brother Paul Cain to come again tonight and minister to us as he feels led of God. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. Yes, 
Yes, he's risen from the dead. He's the resurrected one. thinking of something beautiful that happened between Brother Branham and I in the old days and we used to uh, say you know it's not he said it's not for you and it's not for me we can't use the ministry for ourselves it's for others have you ever heard him say that yes. and uh, so I said well I hope that we can help each other and so he said good morning Paul Brother Paul, you're feeling fine. How am I feeling? <laughs> so good evening, friends. Uh, some of you are doing better than you were last night. And how am I doing? I feel so much strength. Uh, God has done something wonderful for me. Uh, doctor said my blood pressure was fixed and possibility to have to take medication the rest of my life. It wasn't too discouraging because I didn't think I had too long to live anyway. So that didn't bother me so much, but I haven't been on that medication and my blood pressure is normal and the fever, I haven't had a fever since last night, I want to praise the Lord for that. And before we came to the meeting, you know, I came by faith and uh, I uh, told uh, Sister Jessie Williams last night and Jean Rayborg that I was coming here by faith and I w it would be a creative miracle for me to make it here and minister. I laid my life on the line, if you want to know the truth about it, but when you don't have much left, what difference it made. So we came by faith and my heart rate was 120, relaxed in the car in a semi-reclining position, a very relaxed sit-up sit position, which is ridiculous. And I want you to know that since the Lord moved in last night, uh, and on this meeting and you had so much love and compassion for me and we said we're in this together my heart rate all day long has been between 68 and 74 and I just want to praise the Lord for that. I hope you'll remain standing for the reading of the word I didn't, if you, oh I see what you're doing <laughs> you're going for it well thank you I uh, I thought you were being seated. Um, it's so wonderful to have the freedom and the liberty to uh, to bring a message like this. And I've always uh, thanked the Lord for confirmations. He gave me a message about his conscious presence tonight. And if you'll notice the singing and uh, right up to the time uh, we came into the meeting, uh, had something to do with the presence of the Lord and Amen. I really really appreciate the Lord confirming that again so if you'll turn with me to Exodus, Exodus the 33rd chapter and believe with me that the Lord will give me strength that I that I had last night be able to correlate the thoughts by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, let's just pray before we read in Exodus 33 picking up at verse 2 Heavenly Father in the matchless name of Jesus, we thank you for the illumination of scriptures. May your word come alive. For the word of God is alive. It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, the joints of the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Let your word come alive tonight and discern uh, our need, and we'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it. In Jesus' name, may we feel your conscious presence in this place as never before. And we'll never cease to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor and all the recognition. In the matchless name of Jesus, again and again, amen and amen. All right. Um, before I read, I would like to thank the Lord for John and Jean Rayborg, who drove all the way from Phoenix to be here tonight. They're in the audience uh, with my assistant right over here to the 
my left, wherever you are, would you just wave your hand? There they are right there. That's John and Jean Ray Borg, my assistant Reed Grafke, and, and you know, they were the ones we were talking about last night, Jean's testimony, Carl and Jesse Williams' uh, daughter. And then I realized that Daniel was here last night, and he looks like an international evangelist standing over there, and <laughs> just really am thankful to the Lord for him. He has a real wonderful flavor and spirit of the Lord on him. Well, uh, <laughs> we can get the chief of police out from the front of him there. We'll be doing all right. No, Perry doesn't have the chief police spirit. He has that spirit of the Apostle Peter, that impetuous uh, spirit. So I have to be careful around him. I really love Perry Green. And, you know, I hope I'll be able to stay over tomorrow, Lord willing, if I can make some arrangements and stay over tomorrow. I'd like to be here just to honor uh, or pay respect, rather, to him for the wonderful respect he has for me, and uh, I just respect him. I've uh, had the privilege of introducing him before in meetings, and uh, he's helped me in meetings. We work together in meetings, and it's just an honor for him to walk with me to those meetings and for us to be together. And some of those meetings where Brother Branham used to conduct uh, the services at the Full Gospel Businessmen's meetings. Carl Williams, who left the door open and kept the door open for Amen. our precious brother's ministry, uh, and also kept that door open for our ministry after Brother Bradham left us and uh, I really love Carl Williams for that and I, I'll never forget something that Perry said about him. He was the Joseph of Arimathea of uh, this, uh, uh, this movement and uh, I really believe that. All right, uh, without further ado, let's read Exodus 33 verse 1 beginning and, and here it is. I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. And when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned. And no man did put uh, on him uh, in his ornaments. Um, for the Lord had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people, and I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore, now put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. And the Lord talked with Moses. Amen. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. As a man speaketh unto his friend. Let me pause to ask you, is the intimacy with God or is it not? What a wonderful intimacy with God to be able to speak to God as friend to friend. Amen. And Moses spake, and the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people that thou hast not let 
me know whom thou wilt send with me. Now the Lord told him he'd send an angel with him, but he doesn't want the angel. Can you imagine a man talking to Almighty God in terms like these? Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, and that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence, my presence, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated and, and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Does God know your name tonight? And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Show me thy glory. Verse 19, And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and I will be gracious to them whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. God bless you. You may be seated. Now, I prayed much about what to share with you tonight because I didn't expect to stay over. But when the Lord really touched my life and my body, I felt when Pastor Green, when Brother Perry Green felt led of the Lord to invite me to stay over tonight, I wasn't sure about what he just wanted me to uh, enjoy the service with you, which would have been a great blessing had I had the energy and the strength to do so. But uh, I really began to feel along about this afternoon that uh, the Lord wanted me to share these simple thoughts with you tonight. I don't know where they're going to take us. I made uh, some notes, but uh, I may not be able to use them. But I just want to tell you that I feel the worst thing that could ever happen to you, to the Branham people, or to Brother Branham's followers, that it's the worst thing that could ever happen to you. And I want you to know what it is. The worst thing that could ever happen to you is that you lose the conscious presence of God. Amen. Now you can think of all kinds of bad things that could happen. Some of your leaders could die. Some of the, your loved and cherished beloved brethren could die and move off the scene. And tragedy could come from many and varied directions. But that would not be as tragic. Though tragic indeed, it would not be as tragic as you losing the conscious presence of God. Just sitting together, reminiscing, thinking about past glory and past anointing and past visitation, not realizing that Brother Branham taught as much as anybody else, as much as I ever have and more, about the glory of the latter house. It'll be greater than that of the former. It's hard to believe because we've seen great things. We've seen tremendous miracles and wonderful visitations from God. And we cannot minimize or we cannot uh, do anything as far as uh, uh, really putting down any of the great reformations or the moves of God in the past. And surely the greatest move of God that this world in our time has ever known came through his prophet William Brown. And we know that he was a forerunner and we know that he was the... One who had the ministry that spearheaded the great deliverance and healing movement of our day. There's no doubt in my mind about that. I have no difficulty at all accepting that. But the thing of it is, beloved, we cannot just say it came. And there was a man sent from God. And we saw the light. And he preached the light. But the idea is that the same spirit of prophecy that was upon him was vested originally in Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ is that spirit of prophecy. He's the true spirit of prophecy. And Hebrews 13 
And it still is applicable and pertinent tonight. Jesus Christ, the true spirit of prophecy, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so as long as there is a Jesus Christ in our midst and we have the conscious presence of God and His Christ, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Amen. Amen. So I believe that the worst thing that could happen to you or to me would be to lose that conscious presence of God. It would be better had we never known that presence, had we never felt it, had we never experienced it, than to lose it. You know, there's a lot of churches today in the world system just going along, playing games, and saying the words, and they never had the presence of God in the first place, and they haven't even lost it. How can you lose something you never had? And so they don't have it, and they don't know that they never had it, and I, I think they're better off than you and me tonight, because we stand at a, a point of decision, multitudes, multitudes, in the valley of decision, the day of the Lord is at hand in the valley of decision. Will you choose to come out and say, oh God, I want you. I don't want any substitute. I don't want any, Im any imitation. I don't want any impersonation Amen. of your last day message in the third Paul in your last day ministry. I want you Amen. and only you. And I believe if we have that kind of a cry, it's, it's God's responsibility to say, All right, I've promised you an angel. Moses says, Well, I thank you, but no. Thank you, God, for the angel. But if you don't go with me and I can't have your presence, we won't go. So there's no place to go from this point on if we can't have the conscious presence of God and to have His glory with us. There's just no place to go without the intimacy with Him and without the uh, fellowship with Him that we uh, have seen manifested in the past. Now listen, I'm not having any real trouble at all tonight and I want you to relax with me. Would you try to relax with me? Because I just don't know... Uh, what to do with this new strength and this new energy. I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't felt this good in over a month. I just haven't been able to be out of bed for three weeks. And uh, to think I was, you know, just got out of bed by faith and came down here. It's um, divine insanity. That's what it is. And I just thank the Lord that I was uh, foolish enough to believe Him. Oh, I wish we could all be that foolish. Praise the Lord. And... Um, it's been so rewarding, and it's been worthwhile. It's paid off for me. But uh, here's a point I feel like making without going any further. Do you know why so many of you and why so many people follow Brother Branham? It's not that he was just a man with a great ministry or that he was um, uh, a man sent from God. It's the fact that... Um, it was not even the fact that he uh, had a message. That isn't the reason you really follow him. And I'm going to say something. Maybe you've heard it said. Maybe you haven't. I, I doubt it. But I feel like the Lord gave me this to say today. The reason so many followers exist is not because the man had a message. It was because the man became the message. Amen. Beholding the Savior, we become the saved. Beholding the Redeemer, we become the redeemed. Amen. Beholding the healer, we become the healed. Amen. Beholding the baptizer, we become the baptized. Amen. And on and on and on. Amen. But beholding the revelation, we become that revelation. Amen. You see, the resurrection is not a doctrine. The resurrection has nothing to do with doctrine. The resurrection is a person. The resurrection is Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. I am the life. How can you make a doctrine out of the resurrection? Martha said, I know that in the last day you'll raise him up again. The resurrection, they believed in that. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Today, yesterday, today and forever, I am that resurrection. Hallelujah. You excuse me for getting beside myself, but there's no other place to get. Amen. The conscious presence of God is the most central 
fact of Christianity, and I defy anybody to denounce that. The fact that we are conscious of the presence of God makes us the most unique people in all the world because we know God and God knows us. It's wonderful that God knows our name. There's going to be a group of people one day at the judgment who will say, Lord, we cast out devils in your name and we preached on street corners in your name and we did all these mighty works in your name. And Jesus is going to say, depart from me. He's not just saying, I never knew you, but he said, I never sent you. I never authorized you. You were doing God a service without his will. So you see... When God sends somebody, that's altogether different. When God speaks, when there's someone sent from God and they become the revelation that they behold, then it pays us to listen to that person that sits at the feet of Jesus, empties himself of vain tradition and all of their earthly knowledge, and they're willing for their funnel lobes to be filled with the mind of Christ. And they're willing to say, Lord, I denounce and I, I, I will not have anything to do. I disavow my own knowledge and disclaim my own wisdom. And I want to have the mind of Christ. And beholding Him, we become like Him. We become as He is. I don't know how God is ever going to deal with us unless we have that kind of intimacy with Him. But I don't think it's sacrilegious for me to say tonight that the Lord knows our name. And I find that the most glorious thing that I could ever discuss with any congregation is if the Lord knows your name, you have something going for you that nobody else in the world can claim. The Lord knows your name. Jesus said to a group of people one day, you are of your father the devil. He knew their name. But I want you to know that God knows Moses and he knows those by name who have intimacy with him and who are not afraid to get close to him. As I said before, the, the most central fact of the, Christ, of the Christianity that you and I believe in is the conscious presence of God. There are three classes of people. Number one, that class that's afraid to get close to God. And there's a lot of people who are afraid to get close to God and they claim to be born again, but they just never get close to God. Then there's a people who have been close to Him and they have seen His power and they have felt His conscious presence. And this group of people would not stay with the Word, but they would withdraw from the Word. And these are the most miserable people in all the world having a chance to have fellowship with God and then backing off from it and then dividing themselves apart and adjacent to it. These are the most miserable people in all the world. But I know that another class of people are gathered here together tonight in this room. And we're the class of people who, like Moses, want to see the glory of God. We want to see the glory of God. And Moses says, thank you for the angel, but no thanks. I want to see your glory. I want to see your glory. And the Lord God allowed his glory to pass before them. Well, this message is going to tear me apart unless I can get into something else here. Let's turn over to Isaiah chapter 6. I may be telling you some things you might not want to hear, but I hope that you do want to hear this tonight. God has not finished with us. May I repeat what the Lord gave me last night. God is not finished with us. His ultimate intention is to make man in his own image. Let us make man in our own likeness. Let us give man dominion. And I don't believe that the Lord is going to uh, split the eastern skies of glory and come back until all that His holy prophets have said is fulfilled. Amen. It says the heavens must contain Him, this Jesus, this Lord Jesus Christ, until all that the holy prophets have, uh, have spoken, until it's all fulfilled. Amen. All right, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. You see, this is a day when we have no men to lift up. We have no one to lift up. We must see the Lord high and lifted up. 
No one is standing adjacent in the wings tonight to take Brother Branham's place or to take Brother So-and-So's place or somebody else's place. There are no more superstars and there are no more big eyes or little U's. The only thing left is for God to come and tabernacle himself again in his many-membered body and make you beautiful like Jesus and make you behold him and become just like Jesus. Have you ever heard a man talking to his little uh, child and, you know, if uh, the child's doing something wrong, he'll say, you're just like your mother. And the mother will say, you're just like your father. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we behold our Heavenly Father to the extent to where we say, you're just like your father. You're just like your father, the Heavenly Father. You're just like Jesus. You know, there are no photographs of Jesus available today. But you and I are the only thing left that people are ever going to see that will give them a picture of Jesus. Get mad at me if you want. Brother Green, you may have to apologize for inviting me to stay over, but let me right. say it like it is. There are no photographs of Jesus available anywhere. What you see is all the Jesus you're going to see. Christ in you is my hope of glory. Christ in me may be somebody's hope of glory. Paul didn't say, it's Christ in me, your hope of glory. He says, Christ in you, my hope of glory. If I don't see Jesus in you, I don't see him. If you don't see him in me, you don't see him. That's all that's left is for God to come and be tabernacled in his body and for us to behold him and become as he is. Amen. And the world will see him. But no more superstars. No more big eyes and little U's. The Lord is going to reveal something to us all. He must be high and lifted up. Well, above all of this glory of the Lord and above all the throne, verse 2, above it stood the seraphims. One had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one had, uh, uh, one cried unto another and said, Holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, I want you to notice something here that you might, may have noticed and may not have noticed before. These angels or these seraphims are crying one to another saying, Holy, holy, holy. Not love, 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 or mercy, mercy, mercy. But holy, holy, holy. Because the number one attribute of God is Holy God, Holy Ghost. He is a Holy God. Holiness is mentioned 650 times in the Word of God without even using words like sanctify and sanctified, which would put it way over a thousand. But there are over 650 references to the holiness of God. So it must mean that He is a Holy God. And it's more important than the love, love, love and the, all this other business we're hearing today, which is beautiful. But God is a holy God. And the apostolic injunction for you and me tonight is, Be ye holy. It's a command. Somebody, you know, really feels like holiness is an option. Well, you have another thought coming. Holiness is a command. I said this a while back and a group of people didn't understand it. I said holiness is absolutely as important as salvation. And somebody said, oh, that's ridiculous. Well, why is it ridiculous when the Bible says without holiness, no man will see the Lord? So salvation or no, if you're not going to see him, what good is it unless you have his holiness? Amen. Well, it'll take you a while for that to catch up with you. Right. But God is a holy God. And he demands and commands with the apostolic injunction, be ye holy as I am holy. Well, I've got to get on with this. I didn't mean to get hung up there. Oh, yes, I did too. I meant to obey the Lord. Amen. All right. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. And then... Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, 
and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Now we must zero in on this tonight. If we don't start beholding the Lord, we're going to be like the rest of the world. If I have no other doctrine to base this message on tonight of becoming what we behold, I would base it on the scripture, evil communication corrupts good manners. I told you last night at the uh, time we sat in that motel room and watched the Beatles that when they made their first invasion here in the United States, their first appearance here, I want you to know that from that time on, America has gone down down, down, because evil communications have definitely corrupted good manners. We become, how many young people do you be, see beholding uh, the rock-inspired, demonic, subservient tones from hell? They become what they behold. They become like the stars and like the super rock stars of our day. They behold them until they become just like them. A young man attempted to take the life of the President of the United States not too many months ago, and he beheld on a silver screen the very thing that he became. He was so obsessed with this thing that he saw that he actually carried it out in detail because he became obsessed, became what he behold, becoming what you behold. We have that opportunity to humbly bow at the feet of Jesus tonight Holy, holy, holy is this Lord God Almighty and become what we behold. Become what we behold. Think about it. It's the most priceless thing we could ever think about tonight. We have that opportunity of becoming what we behold. So what are you looking at? Are you looking unto Him? Are you going to be lightened? Are you doing, turning all your looking to Him so He'll turn all His looking to you? That's what the Lord wants us to do. Then we're going to behold Him and become like Him. Hallelujah. Well, then when Isaiah beheld Him, then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon the mouth, uh, my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, Send me. What a beautiful thing for a great man of God, a prophet of the Most High God, to come into the awesome presence of holy, holy, holy God, and to find himself an unclean man, a man of unclean lips. I said last night, we don't have any trouble, some of us, confessing our known sins. I don't know of any sin in my life that's not under the blood tonight, any known sin. But when we come into the conscious presence of God, there are sins revealed that we don't even know about. You say, oh, well, this is an Old Testament application. And when the Lord moved progressively with the prophets, he moved upon them. He was um, moving along uh, with them and all that, but they were not necessarily with him and all of that. Let me tell you something. When Peter saw the miraculous power of his holiness, of the holiness of Christ, when he saw those two ships filled with fishes, which represented a great supernatural revelation of the end time ministry and the end time harvest, when he saw that glorious, wonderful manifestation of Christ, here he was with fish up to his armpits, raising his arms, crying out, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord! You wonder, what was Christ doing with a disciple like that? It wasn't perfect. Let me tell you something. 
We might be great in every respect. We may be clean and pure in every respect. But when that glory appears, we are sinful and we find everything wrong. And we want to be like Jesus when we behold His glory, His majesty, and become an eyewitness to His majesty. We feel unclean. We want to be holy as He is holy. Last night when the power and the presence of God came into this place and I had uh, uh, a little hope and something to fasten on to, I went back to my room with fear and awe, with an awesome reverential fear. If Jesus to the fear of the Lord... Where does it put you and me tonight? Where is our reverential fear and respect and awe for God? Amen. I have people say the Lord spoke to me and never bat an eye. Or the Lord revealed this to me or the Lord revealed that to me. And they're never, never, never conscious of the fact that we're talking about an awesome, holy God. He's not your buddy. He's not your pal. He's a God so big that He scoops up the owls of the sea in His hand as though they were a little thing. Yes. The heaven is His throne. The earth is footstool. He's not my pal. He's not my buddy. He's not my partner. He's Almighty God. He's holy. Holy, holy. And just the thrilling fact that I could come to Him and know Him and for Him to know me is the most awesome thing I could ever relate to you tonight. Does God know your name? I believe some of you really know the Lord because you really ministered to me last night and I'll forever be in your debt for helping me to behold that possibility of healing and to grasp and that vision and take it and run with it. I'm so glad I did that. I said, I'm so glad that I did that. Amen. You imagine here Moses, when he was with the Lord and when he beheld the Lord and when the glory of God passed before him, Moses came back with the glory of the Lord all over his face. There's something Amen. precious here. He didn't know it. You see, we don't know that we look like Jesus. When the Lord, when the Lord allows you and me to come into His presence and behold Him and become like Him, we don't know that. It's for others, friends. And if we know it, it ruins the whole thing. Moses did not know that that glory was there. Here's this man who was once so timid, so meek and mild. And here he was uh, with his first appearance of the amber light and the glory of the Lord and the burning bush. Brother Branham told me once that uh, the movie, The Ten Commandments, even though it was just a, uh, uh, you know, a Hollywood presentation of uh, the... Uh, the power of God and the, the burning bush and all of that. That amber light was so near to the light of the angel, to the amber light that he saw. But it makes me really have a tremendous awe tonight as I think of Moses with bowed head and bare feet and trembling heart as he stood before the God of the burning bush. And Moses turned aside and saw the glory of God. And it was so... Uh, omnibus and so awe-inspiring that he had to take his shoes off because the Lord says, Take off thy shoes for the place whereon thou standest is holy, holy, holy ground. And you think of that tonight. Anywhere God's presence happens to settle is holy ground. The Lord is here tonight and all I want to do is say, Holy, holy Holy is His name. He's Holy God, Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. And I want you to know that your only hope is to behold Him. Behold your Redeemer tonight and become the redeemed. Behold your healer tonight and become the healed. Behold Him tonight and He'll be your everything. Amen. Think about having a vision of God, to feel the conscious presence of God, and to stay with the Word of God. That's where we need to be, my friends. We can't leave it. We can't leave it. We can never let it pass from us. The idea is tonight, I felt you picked up on this last night, 
We started on a journey years ago. Will you continue on this journey? Or will you just talk about the glory of the former house? Or will you go right on into this perfection? Or will you continue uh, in this journey? Last night, I don't know whether uh, in my weakness and, and pain, I'm not sure that some of these things came out the way I thought they did. Maybe they did, but just in case they didn't. You remember the story I told you about the American Indians. When they used to file through the forest, single file, maybe there was 70 or 100 or more of them, but yet they'd all step in the footsteps of the leader. And then they did this, of course, to, to um, confuse their enemy. And when their enemy would come along, they'd look and see only one set of footprints. And if the presence of the Lord increases here tonight as I expect it to, do you know what's going to happen? Each of us who are followers of Christ, who have denied ourselves, taken up our cross daily and follow in His steps, this is exactly, I believe, what Jesus had in mind. Do you know if anybody is healed tonight, what's going to happen? They're not going to say, Oh, Robert's passed this way tonight. Or Brother T.L. Osborne passed this way tonight. Or Brother Perry Green passed this way tonight. Or any of these other brethren passed this way tonight. No, they're just going to see one set of footprints and they're going to exclaim, Jesus passed this way tonight because we've learned to behold Him and place our steps in His and we're lost in Him and we're lost in His presence. The time has come for us to see only one body. Amen. Not all the many, many membered body or many segments of the body of Christ. It's time for us to see that we all have what the other needs. And we need a supply. And if we need a repairing, let's get the repairing done. If we need any spots removed, let's get it done. If we need any wrinkles removed, let's get it done. Or you're no bride for Christ. Amen. It's coming back for a bride without spot. A wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. Amen. It just makes me feel chills all over me when I hear people say, Jesus is coming tonight and the rapture could take place tonight. And we're going up. Listen, I want you to know there's some things going to happen. And I don't want you to lose out on it. If there is a rapture and I just happen to not have the right information on it, well, bye-bye. But I want you to know I expect to see the glory of the Lord. I expect to see a representation of His glory until all the earth falls on their face and says, Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. And I believe that no man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost and the lame shall leap as in heart the dumb tongue shall sing for joy the blind shall see from out of obscurity and the deaf shall hear the words that are written in this book that's the justice and the equity of God hallelujah some of you women haven't seen what God really has in store for you as a woman. I know I'm on dangerous ground tonight, but just let me share the boldness that God has given me. Do you know something? You haven't even come near what God has in mind for you. If you could only behold Him, and behold Him and hold steady, let me tell you this ERA business. If anybody here has, is stupid enough just to entertain anything of this nature, the ERA, do you know what that stands for? ERA, everything ridiculous and stupid. It's just everything ridiculous and awful. ERA, everything ridiculous and awful. Well, you missed a wonderful place just to... Really get excited there, but that's all right. But let me tell you, God has some equality. He has some equality for men and women. He has some equality in these last days. His glory is going to be seen in you. And I don't care who you are. God's glory is going to be seen in His tent and in His tabernacle. And I don't mean I see women taking the pulpits of our land or preaching in the world's largest tents and having great ministries or handmaids of the Lord having healing ministries. I'm just telling you that God is going to visit us in these last days and He's going to do some perfecting and we're going to behold Him and become Him and His glory is going to be seen. 
You think about an Israelite taking his son out and they saw that amber light, the glory of the Lord, and that little child would say, what is it, Papa? What is it? And the Israelite would say to that son, it's God! It's God! That's the only manifestation they had of him is that pillar of fire or a pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. Nobody else had it. Only those, the people of the Most High God, had God's glory and had His manifestation before them. And no Nobody else in these last days are going to have it. Only the people, the called out, the people, out of the people, are going to have the manifestation of the glory of God. Hallelujah. I believe that God is going to separate us from all the spirit of the world and give us the spirit of His dear Son, whereby we cry out of Father. He's going to give us the real spirit of sonship. Someone said, do you really believe... And the sons of God, beloved, now are we the children of God. But in this wonderful last day, God is going to do something. There are people in the last days who are telling us they're sons of God. But the sons of God are not going to tell you they're sons of God. They'll show you. If you're really in sonship and adoption and in holiness, you don't tell people you're holy. You just show for the glory of the holiness of God. They find out without you telling them. And it's so much better that way. Will you say amen? amen. Beholding His holiness and beholding His glory and beholding His perfection. Beholding the Lord. That's where it all comes. There's some young people here tonight, and all you think about is marriage and getting married and getting the right one. And there's some older people here tonight who are not married, and you're hitting the panic button, and you just think you're going to get your last chance and all that. Do you know what the Lord's calling on you to do in these last days? We don't have time for a lot of foolishness in these last days. God is calling on you and me to make the Lord Jesus Christ our magnificent obsession and to follow the Lamb wheresoever He goeth. We don't have time to follow after that girl, after that man. We have to follow the Lamb wheresoever He goeth. We must make the Lord Jesus Christ our magnificent obsession. And I find people in this wonderful, wonderful last day message. And that like uh, we said last night, they know everything the dear prophet said. They know everything that he said. But they don't have the spirit with which he said it. And they don't have the spirit of the prophet. Some people know everything Jesus says, but they don't have the spirit of the Son. They don't have the spirit of sonship. And they don't have the spirit of Christ. And if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. But today it's been going over and over in my mind and troubling my heart all afternoon about the division that's among the precious people that claim to believe the message that Brother Branham preached. Here we have boredom, discouragement, and bitterness, and rebellion, and disillusionment, uh, disillusionment and jealousy, and frustration, just like... Uh, 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 the other uh, groups out there and God uh, isn't pleased with it and, and you shouldn't have invited me to stay over to say this because the Lord said when you read this and when you talk about the year that King Uzziah died I saw also the Lord high and lifted up he said, I want you to tell the people that this boredom and disillusionment and discouragement and bitterness and jealousy and this frustration must die this year because he's taking it off. And I believe that he's going to bring that unity and that balance again. And we're going to be able to call each other brother and sister in the Lord again. It grieves me to see that we who have the strength and our momentum and our, the manifold body of Christ, we are separated and divided and we just don't feel that we need this brother. Remember that was the spirit of the brethren who had a healing ministry but an elation ministry and they would say, we don't need Brother Branham because he uh, put them all in the shade and they said, we don't need him here and uh, we can get along without him. And that was the same spirit that caused the healing ministry to come to a halt and the men to die off like flies because they didn't feel they needed Brother Branham. He was much, much too good for them. He had too much going for them. And they weren't able to see the humility and the unassuming beauty of his message because he became that message and it was too much for them. 
We can't become that message if we all bound with gimmicks and systems and we're all bound with Madison Avenue techniques and Wall Street uh, ideas to get the gospel out. God doesn't need it, my friend. I want you to know all he needs is enough people. He had 120 people that had so much of the glory of God on them. That wonderful bush burned again. On the day of Pentecost, it burned again. 120 people, that's all there were. They were gathered together in an upper room, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and cloven tongues like as a fire set up on each of them. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Finally, they were uh, drawn up, compelled out into the streets of Jerusalem. God could have evangelized the world that day. For there were devout Jews out of every nation under heaven gathered together that day. And I want you to know they heard all of these men speak, these lowly Galileans, magnifying God, showing the holiness of God, the glory of God. And they were amazed. There wasn't anybody there to sing almost persuaders, just as I am without one plea. There wasn't anybody there to say, all right, if you don't come at the end of this song, we're going to close and something awful may happen to you today. Won't you come? We're leaving it open. Just one more minute. No, my friends, the Holy Ghost gave the altar call when the holiness of God appeared. When the glory of God, the amber light, cloven tongues like as a fire, that fire, that light, when the Israelites said, that's God, son! Oh, that's God! Every Jew out of every nation under heaven said, that's God! How be it? We hear these lowly Galileans speak in our own tongues in these many and varied languages wherein we were born. Over 3,000 grown men accepted Jesus Christ and Christ accepted them. You know, there's a lot of people claiming to accept Christ today, but does God accept you? Does Christ accept you? That's the criteria. Does He know your name? Just think about that for a minute. Well... That's kind of a ringing indictment, but boredom and discouragement, disillusionment and bitterness and frustration and all these divisions, this is going to have to die, friends, for the glory of God is coming forth. And He needs, and we need, every one of us. We can't do without anybody right now. I don't see anybody die. I want to see the body of Christ do what they did last night for me. And you need to do that for others. And we need each other. We need each other. I don't want to use this strength the wrong way. I want to use it to do just what the Lord has called me here to do. But uh, let me just impress that point with you again. We need to be with Him all the way. Not Him, just with us. We need to be with Him. With Him. Beholding Him. Beholding Him. Could it be that John, who leaned on Jesus' breast, loved Him more? God says, think about the psychology of God. God says, I love them that love me. Can you imagine God saying that? He says it. I love them that love me. It could be that because John loved Jesus more, that Jesus loved John more in that respect. That vacancy is still open. Does anybody want to lean on Jesus' breast? Does anybody want to get away from television and the world and the junk and the filth and the mark and the, the iron mingle with clay and the old system long enough to lean on Jesus' breast? Amen. Hear the heartbeat of God? We can all do that tonight. All it requires is intimacy with God. Making Jesus your magnificent obsession. Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.18 Think about it. We're changed from glory to glory until we look just like Him. It is. It is misunderstood tonight we think we're just instantly the image of God let me tell you we're all being molded and shaped into that image from glory to glory glory to glory 
from glory to glory. He's changing me. Don't fight it. Let the glory of God be revealed to you. And if you take in enough of it, you're going to become just like what you behold. Remember, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their life unto death. And they followed the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Think about that. I believe it requires these, these things to die before the glory of God is revealed. It requires the death of these things that I've mentioned tonight. And I pray that we'll adhere to these things. Father, in Jesus' name, it's been a most different anointing, a most different service tonight than I expected. But I believe that you have been calling out to your people you're telling us, if you're ever going to see my glory, and if the world is ever going to see Jesus, then we're going to have to see some things die, that the train of the Lord may fill the temple, and the glory of the Lord fill the earth. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray that we'll see that uh, the day of the one-man ministry is over, and the day of the superstar is over, and Nobody else is going to appear on the scene. And we don't even want any impersonations or any counterfeits. We want to have the clear vision of the Lord Jesus Christ and humble ourselves and become uh, like what we behold. Lord, we want to look unto you and be enlightened. We want to look unto you. Turn all of our looking to you that you may turn all of your looking to us. Now, I wish I could say that um, uh, every one of us, we feel that awesome presence here tonight. It's going to be up to you to cultivate that type of atmosphere. If you really want to behold the glory of God, then I want you just to say, Lord, Lord, your presence is here. And the most awesome and the most awful thing that could happen is for us never to feel your presence again. For us to lose it and be like other people who never knew the Lord in the first place, who never knew the presence of God, and say, Lord, I want your glory, and I want everything to die in my life that would keep me from beholding and becoming your glory. I want to get away from all evil communications, and I want to behold and become your glory. Until when we speak, we speak as the oracles of God. When we speak, we speak as the mind of Christ. For who, who in this world, who in this world tonight could deny the mind of Christ, the word of God that is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soul and uh, even of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow, and even a judge, a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Father, reveal to your people tonight, reveal to us tonight, that by believing, believing, we can behold and become as you are. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus, don't let us deny ourselves of the revelation that today... Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today. And today, if you hear his voice, always today, maybe you will, maybe you won't, but today, if you hear his voice, he has a place of fellowship for you. He has a place of sharing glory and his wonderful, wonderful presence with you so that you may become an eyewitness of his majesty and his glory. Oh, Jesus, reveal yourself to your people tonight. And let us look unto you. And may we be healed. Amen. May we look unto you. May you become health to all our flesh. Lord, we're not asking so much for divine healing tonight as we are. For divine health. Let us come into your presence where no sickness can come near us. Let us do that, Lord. Uh, let, let me share that with you if I can find it. Um, uh, and then I'll close, Lord willing. Um, Exodus 23, I believe it is. I wanted to share that with you tonight, if I possibly could. It's a, 
more about the angel with Moses and all. First, the Lord says here, uh, For mine angel shall go. It's uh, Exodus 23, 23. For mine angel shall go before thee. And uh, we've already covered all of that area. But verse 24, Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite break down their images, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall bless thy bread and thy water, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Amen. Behold, I am God, and I change not. Would you behold that holy holiness of God? And let's walk in that presence. And I believe that we can know something of divine health. I'd rather have divine health than to have divine healing. Remember, there's not anyone in this room that's ever been healed. But what is subject to the last sickness that may take your life? You think of that. We all, even Lazarus was raised from the dead, died again, you see. Let me tell you, my friend, none of us, None of us should be as interested in divine healing as we are divine health. And we could get the conscious presence of God Amen. and go with it. We'd never need another brother to come our way and call anyone out of the audience and say, Thus saith the Lord, or this and that, or I saw you here, I saw you there, I know this, or I know that about you. Because as Brother Branham said uh, a dozen times or more in his lifetime to me, he said, Brother Paul, we should have someone in our meetings, a good teacher that really knows how to teach the Word and tell the people that the Word of Knowledge and the Revelation does not heal them. It only brings faith to be healed. And if they would appropriate the faith to be healed, that's a different thing. But a lot of people that were healed, they appropriated faith by hearing the Word of the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But there are hundreds of people who heard it and didn't uh, receive it. I'm going to close, really, by saying this. Do you remember when Brother Branham said so many times that the angel of God told him, if you can get the people to believe you, nothing would stand in your way, not even cancer? Amen. I believe that we could even see an enlargement on that tonight. I believe that God is saying to you, to the manifold body of Christ here, to go on with this message, that if you can behold Him and become like Him that nothing would ever stand in your way. Not even death. Hell or the grave. Because you'd be so much like God, you'd have the whole armor of God and the devil would see you with a breastplate and with a with a helmet of uh, salvation and the shoes and uh, uh, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and you'd have the breastplate of righteousness and the whole armor of God and the devil couldn't discern you from the Lord you say oh that that looks like God hey. there's the helmet there's oh my it looks like God oh it is God it has to be God he's wearing God's uniform let me tell you that's what we need to be holding until we look like him flesh of his flesh bone of his bone and have the same mercy and the same compassion. Have the same living understanding. The same quick living understanding. Can you imagine this world would turn to Christ and your sons and daughters, their hearts would be turned back to the Lord and the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children's hearts to the fathers. If we could be filled, according to Isaiah chapter 11, with the Spirit of the Lord. Jesus had it. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of knowledge, the Spirit of living understanding, quick understanding, the Spirit of counsel, and the Spirit of might, and the reverential fear of the Lord. Behold Him and have all these things. God is sovereignty, righteousness, justice, love, eternal life, omnipotence, omniscience, omnipresence, immutability, and veracity. You can't deny it. Behold Him! And you will have some of His essence and attributes. And the world will no longer say, Show us your God! They will see Him tabernacled in flesh 
and will know that God is in his tent. Amen. The Lord bless you, Pastor Green. Longing for Jesus. Longing. Longing for Jesus. I have a longing in my heart for Him. Just to again longing do you believe it's possible for him to come and be present with us tonight I have a longing in my heart do you believe he hears those words you're saying if we'd be sincere tonight I believe his presence would come just to be and one brief moment in his presence would take care of everything I have a longing in my heart for Longing. Everybody believe it, will you? Please don't doubt it. Let's be aware of his presence tonight and believe it. He did say, I'll be present with you where two or three are gathered in my name. Let's not offend him. Just to be near. To feel His presence, I have a longing in my heart for Him. And one mind and one accord and in unison and everybody believing it, Let's sing, Welcome, Welcome, Holy Spirit. If that Spirit would come in tonight like it did on the day of Pentecost, it would charge every soul here. It would refill and rebaptize everyone. It would take away all iniquity. It would take away all sickness, all disease, every lameness. And miracles would occur in your midst if that presence were to come and you'd believe it, it's here. Sing it with me. Welcome, welcome. Come well. If you don't believe it, would you repent right now? Just say, God help me to believe tonight. Take away all the criticism and doubt out of my heart. Well, come thee. Come in power this Sing it again. Yes, welcome. Make him welcome tonight. Invite the presence of the Lord to come into your life. Holy Ghost, we welcome thee. Some of you don't look like you're expecting him. Be 
just as reverent as you can. Welcome, well. Remember, it's important that every one of us believe it. One person can cause it to fail. Oh, have no resentment in your life now. We welcome thee. Come in power this very hour. Holy Ghost, we welcome thee. Sweep over my soul. Sweet hope, sweet spirit. Everyone, please, sit up in your seat and pay attention that you know something's fixing to happen. If you were fixing to be present, you wouldn't be slopping in your seat. You'd have both feet on the floor and both hands in the air, singing Hosanna! Glory to God in the highest. The King of Kings has come. The Lord of Lords, Emmanuel, is present with us. Preachers, listen to me. If you don't do it, how am I going to get everybody else to do it? So disrespectful. We're asking God's presence to come in. You're sitting there paying no attention to what's happening. Who do you think you are? God, come in and convict us tonight. Make us at least be sincere. An angel of God told Brother Branham, if you can be sincere, how insincere must we be when somebody pours their heart out? We sit there looking off into space. God, have mercy on us. Why waste our time in coming if you're not going to get into it? you come in to see a reed shaking in the wind see what somebody's going to say you go away and criticize listen we come expecting God if you don't expect him please leave he's not going to come force himself on you we want him to be present there are people here that are sick they're dying they need a touch from almighty God don't you sit here and hinder it there's any discernment going on it'll be God will reach out there and say oh you rebellious son oh you rebellious daughter why doubt you the move of God among my people today get out of this place and let God's spirit come in and deal sweep over my soul Sweep over my soul, sweet spirit, sweep over. again everybody Lord I'm coming now to thee lay thy nail scarred hand on me 
let thy healing virtue flow, and I shall be made whole. I see a crimson stream of blood. It flows from cow. Uh, its waves which reach the throne of God. Its waves which reach the throne of God are sweeping over me. Are sweeping over me. Flow through me, Holy Spirit. Flow through me, Holy Spirit. Flow through me. Flow through me, Holy Spirit. And to magnify thy name Flow through me Holy Spirit Flow through me Once again Flow through Yes, Lord Come and change our hearts and our lives, O oh God Take from us all of our iniquities, the bitterness and the frustration and the jealousy and the criticism. Remove it, O oh God, through me, Holy Spirit, flow through me. As I live, my hands to worship. And to magnify my name Flow through me Holy Spirit Flow through me Make me more like thee Make me more like thee hear our cry with this one. Make me more like Thee. Give me a heart that's filled Once again, yeah, yes, make me more like thee, Jesus, make me more like thee. Sing it again. Yes, Meg. If you have felt your need tonight to be closer to God or something in your life or to make something right, we're going to let you come down tonight to be somebody to pray with you. Make me more like God bless you, son. That's the presence of God moving in the young man's life. Give me a heart. That's filled with... Look at that. Look at the young people moving out. Their hearts are still tender enough to be stirred by God. Like the... Once again, that's the job. 
That's the goal. Make me more like Thee, Jesus. Make me more like Thee. Give me a heart that's filled with love. And make me more like Thee. Or to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. On earth I long to be like him all through life's journey from earth to glory I only ask to be like him yes to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, on earth I long to be like Him, all through life's journey. To glory, I only ask to be like Him. I feel like praising Him tonight for the move of God that's taking place in these lives. Hallelujah.